Today we're joined by Tongi Labrecht of the American Red Cross of Alaska. Thanks so much for coming in. Well, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having us. You guys have had a really busy summer. Well, absolutely. I'd love to tell you that things are business as usual, but they are far from that. And uh, it's still ongoing. So as you know, throughout the state, we're still keeping a close eye on fires and situations as they develop. We realize that although things have calmed down to a certain degree, we always need to be vigilant. And with over 4 million acres burned so far this mm -hmm. summer, I'm guessing the closer they get to where people live, the more vigilant you become. That's absolutely right. So we are watching all the areas, um, not only for what might pop up, but also uh, just being a little bit more prepared and having an idea, working with the Forest Service, also working with the state of Alaska and so on to make sure that we're working very closely with them to identify what could and would happen if there were a disaster. We're also working very hard to prepare people, not only with things like our wildfire apps online, but also um, doing training with folks, encouraging them to build kits, encouraging them to be prepared so that like in Kenai, for example, where there was a shelter open down there, we had a lot of folks that were really ready, both with their RVs as well as their personal um, protective equipment, food, and so on, and they were ready for that eventuality. So that's really what we do with Red Cross is we're not just alleviating the suffering when it's happening, but we're also trying to help prevent it as well. You know, being prepared, it's always been the Boy Scout motto, and in Alaska it always works out as well, because when you have a natural disaster, you oftentimes only have minutes. That's right. That's right. And one thing that's different here um, in Alaska from uh, the rest of the country is they'll tell you to build a kit and to be prepared for three days. And in Alaska, it's seven days because you don't know when um, aid will be able to get to you. So we tend a lot of times to think about maybe the bigger cities, the bigger locales. We forget that there's so much of Alaska that's not accessible necessarily by road or that you're going to have to maybe wait for aid to get to you. Mm -hmm. And as resourceful and resilient as Alaskans are, there still needs to be a plan. They need to build the kits. They need to get their communities prepared. And they need to be ready not for if something happens, but when something happens. I guess that's probably what we've learned a lot with the recent events as well, with the fires and so on. Well, I know if you don't live in Anchorage, you learn quite quickly that all it takes is a couple avalanches, and all of a sudden you may not have food for a week. That's right. Even if you are on the road system. We are one of the most interesting states in that it's not just wildfire, but it's earthquakes, it's floods, it's so many different things. So um, we most definitely are prepared to help with any type of disaster. It isn't necessarily fires. I think that that's probably what we're the best known for mm -hmm. is helping people when they have a home fire um, to get their lives back together. But as you can see from the evacuations that happen on the interior, sometimes it's fire, sometimes it is like a Galena type of example where you have flooding, you have ice jams that can happen. We had earthquakes even in the middle of fires, there were earthquakes that were ongoing. Unfortunately, those didn't do major damage, but we just need to be prepared for all those eventualities. Tell me what the first cross, or the first cross, I'm sorry, the, tell me what you guys do when you get that phone call saying, hey, there's been an event. Right. Go through with me the steps that you guys take care of. Well, it, it depends on the scope of what we're talking about. So we work very closely with the fire department as well as the um, state and local agencies. But on the preventative side, so that we're getting ready for that phone call, we're sitting on the boards of the local emergency planning councils and so on. So we're part of their emergency plan. Mm -hmm. We have points of contact throughout the state. We also have points of contact with our Alaska Ready program. Uh, where we have folks trained in all the different communities, over 60 communities. And so, you're building relationships uh, there, all too, the time. which have got to be the most important part of this it's whole thing. got to happen because it's so far away. If somebody's calling us from Tanana or something, we need somebody there that's on site that's going to be able to call us that's a Red Cross volunteer. So they'll call us and they'll tell us what's happening. Um, we'll send people out, certainly, to investigate and see what's going on. We, of course, alert all of our partners, whether it's the state, whether it's the city, the local and borough officials as well. Um, we do have six offices throughout the state. So we have one in Juneau, in Kodiak. We have one in the uh, Valley. The place, we're yeah. all over the place. So we're able to deploy. It really happens through all the volunteers we're able to deploy. We have, um, we're mostly a volunteer-led organization. So I have 15 staff statewide, but I have 600 volunteers. Oh, you got to love that. Right. And also, 
your funding stream, from what I understand, is mostly donations. That's absolutely right. So people like to think sometimes that we're a government entity, which we're not. We are mandated by the uh, federal government to be the organization that helps in disaster, as well as assisting the armed forces. Those are kind of our two mandates, our service to the armed forces. And that those donations, though, I mean, really what happens is it's a combination of our volunteers that we're able to deploy quickly and mobilize quickly, and also what we're able to do with both uh, private funders and individual funders who are able to provide us the funds to do that. Uh, and the important part um, of that is to realize that we're year-round responding, we're, we're year-round preventing, and we're year-round working towards making sure that we have a good and solid plan in place. But when an event happens, we basically mobilize our volunteers and we start mobilizing our corporate donors and our individual donors and so on. So everyone can work together to make sure that we're safe here in Alaska. Great. Well, we got to take a commercial break. Stick with us. We'll be right back in just a second.